Welcome to the second presentation of the third module of the MELDA project, Digital Content Creation. This module aims to inform and provide secondary school teachers with a range of techniques that will help them produce compelling audiovisual and text-based content to enrich their lectures and improve student experience. It will also help them enhance their web content skills and social media awareness. This topic will help secondary school teachers and students gain basic skills and competences to create, edit, store and share content via cloud and other web services. The focus will be on open source or other free to use digital tools. Module 3, Digital Content Creation, includes three topics. Audiovisual content, cloud-based content creation, and short-form content creation for social media. In this presentation, we will be looking at the second topic, cloud-based content creation. More specifically, we will seek to develop an understanding of cloud content and an analytical and conceptual skill pack on the use of digital technologies. We will also pursue the enhancement of practical skills on the creation of cloud-based content using online platforms and the development of self-confidence in content creation. So what does the term cloud-based mean? According to Van Jubiel, the managing editor of webopedia.com, Cloud-based is a term that refers to applications, services, or resources made available to users on demand via the internet from a cloud computing provider's services. Let's break this down a bit. So, cloud-based is a term that can be used to characterize applications, services, or resources. These can be accessed on demand through the internet, which means that you can access them whenever you want, provided you have an internet connection. Finally, she mentions that your data and files are stored on the servers of the cloud computing provider instead of your own computer, which is typically the case if you're using software which is installed on your own computer. So, what is cloud-based content creation? Cloud content creation falls under the umbrella of cloud computing, which is essentially the on-demand availability of computer system resources and services that can be found on the internet. Cloud content is used to increase storing capacity, to reduce expensive operating or infrastructure costs, to create free and on-demand content available online, and to enhance functionality through e-learning. Cloud-based content can be very effective when used in formal settings such as school, work or formal meetings. Focusing on schools, teachers have the ability to create engaging content using online-based software and digital tools. There are different types of resources. Some, such as Google Docs, can help with document creation. Others can help with visual content and material. One such example is Canva, a website with three options for design. So let's take a closer look at these tools, shall we? To create an online word processing document, first log in to your Google account and access Google on your browser. Then click the grid of nine shapes seen at the upper right corner. This should show the drop down as seen here. Click the docs icon. In this case, it's the first one. Once you've accessed Google Docs, you're given the option to start a blank document from scratch or to use one of the given templates to create things such as resumes, letters, project proposals, brochures, or reports. These are just some of the options offered. To see more templates you can use, click template gallery. This will open up a menu with all the options. Google Docs is a word processor, which means you can do things like write long-form content or printer-friendly documents. Google Slides, on the other hand, is a tool you can use to create presentations. It allows you to add visual and audio content and share the presentation online with students or other teachers. You can choose whether the person who accesses your presentation online can edit the document and change things, or if they can simply view it. 
Allowing other people to edit the same document can be very useful for co-creation of material as it saves you the trouble of having to save countless versions of the same file and trying to keep track which is the latest one. That being said, it's important to remember that as with any shared document, any ch changes that you make on the original presentation can be seen by the people you've shared the document with. Cloud computing system resources can also be used in an informal setting to create engaging content. One such example is WordPress, a digital platform that lives in a cloud computing system and gives you the opportunity to create and share content. This digital platform is used mostly for blogging and creating audio, visual and text-based material such as articles and cooking recipes. WordPress is first and foremost a content management system or blog software that is accessible via the internet and gives you the ability to create your own style of blog and choose through a variety of templates and plugins. The first step is to visit their website at www.wordpress.com. Click Get Started at the top right to create an account and follow the steps. The first few are the same as with any account creation. You need to provide your email, username and password. In addition, you will receive an email to confirm your account. After this is done, WordPress will send you an email with a lot of useful information to help you set up your website or blog. After you've given your email, username and password, you get to choose a domain name for your blog. If you're not sure what you want it to be or if the one you want is already taken, WordPress gives you suggestions of available domain names based on the keywords you provide. You're also given different options regarding the extension of your domain, such as .com, .net, or .blog. Some options are free and some are paid. There are different plans you can choose depending on your needs, but you can also choose to create a free site. Once all of that is done, you will be prompted to give your blog a title and then choose through a variety of templates to create your own blog. Through pop-up prompts, you will be guided with clear instructions on how to set up your blog step-by-step. Step. The current slide shows what the My Site tab should look like after you've blogged for a while with your traffic and insights as well as the management menu on the left-hand side. On the Site drop-down, you can manage your pages, posts and media. You can create new pages and write new blog posts, or you can edit existing ones. In the media section, you can manage all of your media, upload new images, documents, video or audio files, and attach them to posts you've already created or posts you'll create in the future. When you've set up your blog, it's time to start writing. Go to the post section on the management menu on the left-hand side and click New Post. This should open up this window. After you decide what subject you're going to write about, make sure you give it a catchy and noticeable title to grab the attention of readers. Now it's time to get creative. This is a block-based editor, which makes it easy to add or remove elements and to move them around. When inserting a new blog, you can choose its format. You can add text, single images or image galleries, sound clips, embedded videos, and much more. Regarding text, the format of writing is very straightforward and clear, and it allows you to choose the font style, size, and color, as well as the background. On the right-hand side, you can see the post management panel, where you choose which category your post will go under and which tags to use to make it more traceable. You can also use a featured image for the post and determine the post's format. You can also schedule your post to be published later on at a specific time of your choosing, if you prefer, by clicking on the post settings button on the right hand side. This is a very convenient feature, especially if you're planning on writing and posting regularly. After you're done setting everything up, you can use your blog in many ways. It could be a way to engage with your students and their parents and get them more involved. 
You can also get creative with your teaching methods and have students write relevant articles or do relevant projects that can be featured in your blog. The possibilities are endless. Let's move on to take a look at Canva. This is a simplified graphic design tool website founded in 2012. It uses a drag and drop format and provides access to photographs, vector images, graphics and fonts. It is used by non-designers as well as professionals. The tools can be used for both web and print media design and graphics. Like with most cloud-based content, Canva offers both free to use and paid options. To sign up for Canva, visit their website at www.canva.com and click the sign up button in the upper right corner. You can create a new account by signing up with your Google, Facebook or email. Once you sign up, you will be prompted to choose what you will be using Canva for. You have the option to create a teacher account, which requires you to provide some details for verification. If you do not wish to take this step, you can simply create a personal account or any of the other types if they interest you more. If you do decide to go with the teacher profile template, you are given the option to add more people in your team as collaborators for designs. This means that everyone in the team is given access to the designs and can view and make changes as they see fit. With your first design, you can use a template that fits the purpose of your creation. If you want to make your teaching material engaging and creative, you can take things a step further and use templates that go with the theme of the subject. For example, if you're an art teacher, you can create a poster that is creative and educational at the same time. A graphic design teacher would use, say, the logo template or the tripod template. For the purposes of this presentation, we went with the poster design. When you choose your poster design, you can go through the tutorial, which is shown on the lower right hand side of your screen to get the basics about navigating Canva. On your left hand side, you can choose a template if you like, or you can proceed with the blank canvas in front of you. You can also insert photos and different elements and add text and background. When you're done with your poster, you can either choose to download it, share it, or publish it. You can also share your design with others to view or edit. So, today we saw that the topic of cloud content creation presents the importance of cloud computing, which is essentially the availability of online tools and digital resources to create unique content that can be stored, shared and edited online. There are plenty of digital tools and software that are available online and can be used to make creative and engaging content for personal use as well as for educational purposes. Google Docs, WordPress and Canva are just three online tools this lecture has touched upon, but they give an idea of the type of tools a teacher can use to create content for their students. Teachers can use the online tools we saw today to enhance their teaching materials through the use of engaging visual content and by allowing their students to work interactively. So, we hope you found this presentation helpful. If you would like to know more about the project, feel free to visit the project's website at www.neldaproject.eu. You can find this material in presentation format on the project's e-platform. Thank you for watching.